time slide 01. In this session, we will go through some of the time-related concepts like the time and distance concept, the time and work concept, amongst others. Though these concepts are not a regular feature in the CAT, but it is advisable to go through these concepts lest the CAT springs up more surprises. First, we will deal with the concepts of time and distance. Let us first give an elementary definition of speed. Speed of a body is defined as a distance covered by it in unit time. Let us suppose that a person starts walking from point A. He reaches point B which is at a distance d meters in t seconds. Therefore, the speed of the person is equal to d divided by t which is distance upon time. Now let us broaden our definition to that of an average speed. Let the person start walking from point A. The person covers the distance AB that is D1 meters with a speed of V1 meter per second. Let the person cover the distance BC that is D2 meters with a speed of V2 meter per second. The time taken to cover AB is equal to D1 upon V1 seconds which is T1 seconds. And time taken to cover BC is equal to D2 upon V2 seconds which is equal to T2 seconds. Thus, the average speed is given by total distance upon total time which is equal to D1 plus D2 upon T1 plus T2 meter per second. Let us now apply the concept that we have gone through. We will consider the following question. If a boy goes to school at 6 km per hour and returns home at 4 km per hour, find his average speed. Here, let the distance the boy covers while going to school or coming back from school be d kilometers. The total time taken is equal to d upon 6 plus d upon 4 hours. Thus, average speed is equal to d plus d upon d divided by 6 plus d upon 4 km per hour. Thus, replacing the values, we get the average speed to be equal to 2 into 6 into 4 upon 6 plus 4 km per hour, which gives 4.8 km per hour. Let us now go through some of the important points related to speed. If a certain distance d, say from a to b, is covered at a km per hour and the same distance is covered again, say from b to c in b km per hour, then the average speed during the whole journey is given by the average speed equals to 2ab upon a plus b km per hour. While traveling a certain distance d, if a man changes its speed in the ratio m is to n, then the ratio of time taken becomes n is to m. If two persons a and b start at the same time in opposite directions from two points and arrive at the two points in a and b respectively after having met, then a speed upon b speed is equal to root b upon root a. Let us consider the following question. A man starts from b to k, another from k to b at the same time. After passing each other, they complete their journeys in 3 1 by 3 and 4 4 by 5 hours respectively. Find the speed of the second man if the speed of the first is 12 km per hour. The first man's speed upon the second man's speed is equal to root b upon root a which is equal to root of 4 4 by 5 upon 3 1 by 3 which is equal to root of 36 upon 25 which gives 6 by 5. 
Therefore, 12 upon second man speed is equal to 6 by 5. Therefore, the second man speed is equal to 10 km per hour. Let us now consider an important condition. Suppose we have a vehicle of length d meters and a pole of negligible length. The vehicle is moving with a speed of v meter per second. Thus, the time taken to completely cross the pole is equal to d by v second. Let us now consider an important condition. Suppose we have a vehicle of length x meters and a stationary container of length y meters. The vehicle is moving with a speed of v meter per second. Thus, the time taken to completely cross the container is equal to x plus y by v second. We will now go through an important concept of relative speed. Let us suppose that there are two persons A and B. They are moving in the same direction with speed v1 and v2 meter per second respectively. Then, the relative speed of the two objects or the persons moving in the same direction is equal to mod of v1 minus v2 meter per second. We will now go through an important concept of relative speed. Let us suppose that there are two persons A and B. They are moving in the opposite direction with speed v1 and v2 meter per second respectively. Then, the relative speed of the two objects of the persons moving in opposite direction is equal to v1 plus v2 meter per second. Now, instead of persons, let us take two objects A and B whose lengths are x and y meters respectively. They are moving in the same direction with speeds v1 and v2 meter per second. The relative speed is equal to mod of v1 minus v2 meter per second. And the total distance is equal to x plus y meters. Thus, the time taken is equal to x plus y upon mod of v1 minus v2 seconds. Let us take the same two objects A and B whose lengths are x and y meters. They are moving in the opposite direction with speeds v1 and v2 meter per second. The relative speed is equal to v1 plus v2 meter per second. And the total distance is equal to x plus y meters. Thus, the time taken is equal to x plus y upon v1 plus v2 seconds. Let us have a look at the extension of the concepts of relative speed. Suppose that the speed of a boat in still water is x km per hour and the speed of the stream is y km per hour. Then the speed while travelling with the stream that is speed downstream is equal to x plus y km per hour. And the speed while travelling against the stream that is speed upstream is equal to x minus y km per hour. A train moving at a uniform speed takes 20 seconds to pass a cyclist riding 11 km per hour, but only 9 seconds to pass a post. Then find the length of the train. Let the length of the train be L km and its speed be x km per hour. Since the train takes 20 seconds to pass a cyclist riding 11 km per hour, then time taken is equal to 20 upon 3600 hours which is equal to total length upon relative speed which is equal to L upon x minus 11 hours. Also, since the train takes 9 seconds to pass a post, then the time taken is equal to 9 by 3600 hours which is equal to total length upon the relative speed which is equal to L upon x hours. Solving the two equations, we get L is equal to 0.5 km, which is 500 meters. The second concept we will deal with is that of races. Let us have a look at the terminology that we will be frequently encounter. A contest of speed between participants is called a race. 
The point from where a race begins is called the starting point and the point where the race finishes is called the winning post or the finishing point. If all the persons contesting a race reach the winning post at exactly the same time, then the race is said to be a dead heat race. Now we will list down the important formulae or the expressions. A gives B a start of X meters. It states that if the distance between the starting point and the finishing point is L meters, A covers L meters while B covers L minus X meters. For example, in a 100 meter race, A gives B a start of 10 meters means while A runs 100 meters, B runs 100 minus 10, 90 meters. A beats B by X meters. It states that if the distance between the starting point and the finishing point is L meters, A wins the race by covering L meters while B covers L minus X meters only. A beats B by X meters or T seconds means that B runs X meters in T seconds. Also, the winner's distance is equal to the length of the race. A gives B a start of T seconds. It implies that A starts the race T seconds after B starts from the starting point. A beats B by T seconds. It implies that A reaches the finishing point T seconds before B finishes. Until now, we were dealing with straight track races. Let us now get introduced to circular tracks. Let us take a circular track with the persons A and B together at the starting point. These two persons A and B starting at the same time and from the same point along a circular path will be together again for the first time when the faster gains one complete round over the other. Let them meet at the lowest vertical line. The statement implies that when B reaches the lowest vertical line, A completes one complete revolution plus the distance from the top vertical line to the bottom vertical line. Hence, the time taken by faster person to complete one round over the other is equal to the length of the race track upon the relative speed. Two persons starting at the same time from the same point will be together again for the first time at the starting point at a time which is the LCM of the time taken by each to complete a round. Three persons starting at the same time and from the same point on the circular track will be together for the first time after the start at a time which is equal to the LCM of the time taken by the fastest to gain a complete round over each of the other two. Let us now consider an example. In a kilometer race, if A gives B a 40 meter start, A wins by 19 seconds. But if A gives B 30 seconds start, B wins by 40 meters. Find the time that each takes to run a kilometer. Let A takes X seconds and B takes Y seconds to 1000 meters. Since A gives B a start of 40 meters, thus the distance between A and B is 40 meter when A starts the race. Also, B reaches the end point 19 seconds after A. Hence, the time taken by B to reach the end point after A starts the race is equal to X plus 19 is equal to 960 upon 1000 Y. Let this equation be 1. Since A gives B a start of 30 seconds, it implies that A starts 30 seconds after B. Also, B wins by 40 meter, which implies that when B reaches the end point, A is still 40 meter behind him. Hence, the time taken by B to reach the end point is equal to 960 upon 1000 x plus 30 is equal to y. Let this equation be 2. 
Solving the two equations, we get x is equal to 125 seconds and y is equal to 150 seconds. Let us consider an example to illustrate the circular track races. Three men A, B and C walk around a circle. 1760 meters in circumference at a rate of 160, 120 and 105 meter per minute respectively. If they all start together and walk in the same direction, when will they first be together again? A. The quickest man gains one complete round on C, the slowest man, in 1760 upon 160 minus 105, which is 32 minutes. A. The quickest man gains one complete round on B, the slowest man, in 1760 upon 160 minus 120, which is 44 minutes. Thus, all of them will be together again at a time which is the LCM of 32 and 44, that is 352 minutes. The new concept that we will go through is the relation between time and work done. Let us first go through an illustration to underline the concepts. A group of laborers do a piece of work in 10 days. But 5 of them are absent and so the rest do the work in 12 days. Find the original number of laborers. Let the number of laborers be x. So x laborers in 10 days can do the whole work. Therefore x laborers in one day can do 1 upon 10 of the whole work. One labor in one day can do 1 upon 10x of the whole work. Therefore, x minus 5 laborers in one day can do x minus 5 upon 10x of the whole work. Again, x minus 5 laborers in 10x upon x minus 5 days can do the whole work. Therefore, 10x upon x minus 5 is equal to 12, which gives x to be equal to 30 laborers. Now let us elaborate the concept that we used in the previous illustration. Work is always considered as a whole or one. Then, if A can do a piece of work in A number of days, then in one day, one-eighth of the work is done. If X number of persons can do a piece of work in A number of days, then one person in one day does one upon AX of the work. If A is X times as good as B, then he will take 1 upon X of the time taken by B to do the same work. Suppose that A can do a piece of work in X number of days and B can do the same piece of work in Y number of days. Therefore, A can do 1 upon X of the whole work in one day and B can do 1 upon Y of the whole work in one day. Therefore, A and B together can do 1 upon Y plus 1 upon X of the whole work in one day. Therefore, A and B together can do X plus Y upon XY of the whole work in one day. Hence, A and B together can do the whole work in XY upon X plus Y days. If two men A and B together can finish a job in X days and if A working alone takes A days more than A and B working together and B working alone takes B days more than A and B working together then X is equal to root of AB. Let us consider the following question. To do a piece of work B takes three times as long as A and C together and C twice as long as A and B together. If the three together can complete the work in 10 days, then how long would each take by himself? Three times B's daily work is equal to A plus C's daily work. Therefore, four times B's daily work is equal to a plus C plus B's daily work which is equal to 1 upon 10 of the whole work. 
Therefore, B's daily work is equal to 1 upon 40 of the whole work. So, B takes 40 days to complete the whole work. Similarly, 3 times C's daily work is equal to A plus C plus B's daily work, which is equal to 1 upon 10 of the whole work. Therefore, C's daily work is equal to 1 upon 30 of the whole work. And so, C takes 30 days to complete the whole work. Similarly, A's daily work is equal to 1 upon 10 minus 1 upon 30 minus 1 upon 40, which gives 1 by 24 of the whole work. Therefore, A takes 24 days to complete the whole work. We will now go through the concepts of pipes and cisterns. Let us first list down the important points. If an inlet pipe fills a cistern in A hours, then one eighth part is filled in one hour. Similarly, if an outlet pipe empties a cistern in B hours, then one beat part is emptied in one hour. Thus, if a cistern is connected to both inlet and outlet pipes, both mentioned above, then 1 upon A minus 1 upon B part is filled in 1 hour. If a pipe A is X times bigger than B, then pipe A will take 1 upon X of the time taken by pipe B to fill the cistern. If an inlet pipe fills a cistern in A minutes, takes X minutes longer to fill the cistern due to a leak in the cistern then the time in which the leak will empty the cistern is given by A into 1 plus A upon X. If two pipes A and B can fill a cistern in X minutes and if A alone can fill it in A minutes more than X minutes and B alone can fill it in B minutes more than X minutes then X is equal to root of AB. We will consider an illustration for the purpose of concept application. A tank 9 feet by 5 feet by 2 feet has a supply pipe pouring in 576 inch cube of water in a minute and an exhaust pipe emptying it in 3 hours. If the tank is full and both pipes are open, how many hours will it take to empty it? The volume of the tank is equal to 9 into 5 into 2 feet cube which is equal to 90 into 12 cubed inch cube. Therefore, volume of water exhausted in one minute is equal to 90 into 12 cubed upon 3 into 60 inch cube, which is equal to 864 inch cube. Hence, we have 864 minus 576 which gives 288 inch cube removed in one minute. Therefore, the time required to empty the tank is equal to 90 into 12 cubed upon 288 which is 540 minutes or 9 hours. We have now come to the last topic related to time and it deals with clocks. Let us study a standard clock. There are two hands in a clock with the shorter one called the hour hand and the longer one called the minute hand. The angle between two consecutive R numerals is 30 degrees. This angle is the angle covered by the R hand in one hour or 60 minutes. The angle between two consecutive minute numerals is 6 degrees. This angle is the angle covered by the minute hand in one minute. The minute hand passes over the 60 minute spaces while the R hand goes over the 5 minute spaces. That is, in 60 minutes, the minute hand gains 55 minutes over the hour hand or 55 upon 60 minute spaces in one minute. In one minute, the minute hand moves 6 degrees. In one minute, the hour hand moves 30 upon 60 which is 1 by 2 degrees. That is, in one minute, the minute hand gains 6 minus 1 by 2, which is 5 and a half degrees over the hour hand. On the whole clock based questions are similar to the raised ones between the hour and the minute hand. Let us now go through an illustration. At what time?
time between 4 and 5 will the hands of a watch be at right angles after the two hands cross each other. Let us first draw a clock. The angle between the hour and the minute hand at 4 o'clock is 120 degrees. Let the hour hand rotate theta degree before the angles between the two hands is 90 degrees. Hence, the angle the minute hand rotates is 120 plus 90 plus theta, which is 210 plus theta degrees. Thus, the time taken by the minute hand to cover the angle 210 plus theta degrees is equal to 60 into 210 plus theta upon 360, which is equal to the time taken by the hour hand to cover the angle theta, which is equal to 60 into theta by 30. Solving, we get theta is equal to 210 upon 11, or it is equivalent to 60 into theta by 30, which is 38 2 by 11 minutes. Hence, they are at right angles at 38 2 by 11 minutes past 4. Let us now list down some of the important points that one should remember. In every hour, we have the hands coincide once 